Well, I've got Chapel Heart on the line now. Welcome to the BCMA. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you? We're doing really, really well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, apart from the weather, the weather's shocking here at the moment. But uh, congratulations on the nomination for International Song of the Year with your song. You can have him, Jolene. Thank you. I love that song. I mean, how did the uh, idea come about? Is it in relation to the Dolly Parton song? Yes, absolutely, a hundred percent. It started out as uh, we we're such we're huge Dolly fans, and um, we uh, we were shooting a cup for a, a cover a video for her song Nine to Five, and Dev has on a shirt that says "You can have him, Son Jolene," and we were like, "Who does she think she is? You can't take somebody's <laughs> head and then tell me I can have him." And so we were like, "How about you can just have him, Jolene? How about that?" And we were like, oh, "We gotta write that." And we sat down and we wrote it and the energy was there. We had so much fun writing the song. And um, and as it lives today, as you can have them, Jolene. Wow. wow. And what's the feedback been like over there to the song? It has been incredible. Like, I think we weren't expecting the, the response that we got. I think that's with any of our music, really. We're always so shocked at the response. But people have been so receptive to it and... The word is that Dolly got a chance to hear the song. We can't confirm that for sure, wow. but that's what, right, allegedly. Yes. Allegedly, Dolly has heard the song and she loved it. So if that is true, that is amazing. And it just takes this over the top. Yes. From what I've heard about Dolly, I would imagine that she she probably will reach out to you at some point. Yeah. I so. no she probably will. Yeah. But it's crazy because they say in over 50 years of music, like, of all of the takes, and as long as Do uh, Dolly Parton's Jolene has been a staple in just music in general, no one's ever said, you know what, just keep him, girl. <laughs> and I think I think yeah. that that perspective is kind of what had a lot of people like, you know what? Yeah, Leslie Leslie Fram from CMT, she just that that's exactly what she said. She said, in 50 years of country music, no one has ever said that. And we were like, what? You know, and so it's a. It's amazing, though, to be able to take such a classic and, and make it kind of, I guess, to what would be like, what would be going on in 2021, you know? Yeah, yeah I think it's a, it's a brilliant idea. And um, I remember going back into the 70s now, I'm showing my age, in the late 70s, in the punk rock era in the UK, there was a, <laughs> there was a song called Gordon is a Moron, right? Oh, come on. And I, I got a single, I found a single in a shop when I was just scooting around there in the sort of early 80s. And I found this song saying, no, Gordon is not a moron. And it was a guy actually <laughs> called Gordon saying, I'm not a moron. It was brilliant how it did. And when I heard that, I, it reminded me of that, of, of like um, a negative and a positive mm -hmm. kind of thing, you know, and that, that's great. It's a great song. Well, you're in, you're in a great category here, actually, because obviously the, the BCMAs are held in November in London in 2021. I don't know if you can get over at the, to, to the awards, but but basically Indra Dangris, um, Miranda Lambert, Sophie Hansen and Taylor Swift are in the same category. That so, is mind-blowing, yeah. So you're in there on your own merit, yeah? Yeah, it's, it's still kind of crazy to be like in a category with, you know, it's it's almost like we're to that point, like our idols are becoming our contemporaries and yeah. it's very strange. <laughs> right, right. Well, it's quite a unique setup that you've got there. I mean, three girls on, on the stage as well, shaking it and giving it some sass, you know? <laughs> Shake it up everyone. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it's it's brilliant. And how's things been with obviously during lockdown as well? I mean, has it been you know more creative for you, or you know, have you been doing live streams, etc.? Um, at the beginning of um, at the beginning of quarantine, like we did a good bit of live streams, and like we also we got a chance to quarantine together on a lake, and all, well, we almost was, killed each other. It was the most beautifully terrible horribly yeah. awesome thing that we've okay. ever experienced but like a lots of great music came out of it we grew like as an indi as individuals and as a group and like i mean i wouldn't want to go back there but yeah. lots of great things came out of it yeah. well, there we, used to be um, about five of you but you've killed two there you go <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> only yeah. the strongest survived <laughs> 
But um, but yeah, no, we we had songs like on our on our new album, The Girls Are Back in Town. We got a song called Redneck Summer Night, and that was written in um that was written in quarantine. And um, we just, like I said, there was an offer, definitely a space to be more creative because you have nothing but time. But also um, it was a lot of just like finding who we were as yeah. women, yeah. as people, as sisters and cousins. And, you know, there was a, there was like a rebirth almost. And there was, you know, so there was, it was a, a long labor it was a, and delivery. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long labor and delivery, she said. But, um, but so we're so glad for the birthday because um, I think that you'll hear a lot of that growth and the girls are back in town and um and songs like you can have him jolene and you know what i mean like that those it, it just it really just kind of helped us grow i guess is the yeah. word i'm looking for but i mean i think um ladies in general or women in general now there's a strong um flavor uh, once for a better phrase of good country music from women now you know, the guys are not getting it their own way now are they i mean there's a strong and all having your own different sound as well which is cool yeah, I think, um, I think it's been like long overdue, especially since like country music's been dominated by mostly men for a long time. And just to be able to come up in a time where like women are supporting and encouraging and empowering each other. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, you know, and it really helps to have uh, like CMT and uh, just country music, the country music community have things in play like equal play rights. And, um, you know, that just says, for anybody who doesn't know, it just says that for every male video, there's a female video. For every yeah. male song that plays, there's a female song that plays. And that just really has been a game changer. And it, it, it really has um, reshaped so much of, like, uh, who we are right now in country music. And uh, we're just super grateful for that as well. And how did it all start? I mean, what was the beginning of your, your uh, travels then in country music? Um, well, I think... Our beginnings in country music started way before we were even in a band because, you know, we're from a small town in Mississippi. So country music's kind of just like in our blood. And growing up, like we were always around country music. It was like when you were on the bus, you heard country music in the grocery store, in the classroom, when you have like free time, it's country music playing. And really our hometown, there were only like two stations that actually, that really picked up and the country station was one of yeah. the better ones. So it was almost like it was just we were fed it, yeah. And it's and like it's like it's a lifestyle. We it's like so many other types of music that you listen to. It's like even though you know it's a great song, you love it. But whenever a country song comes on for us, like we grew up running up and down the roads barefoot and you know playing in the woods and like yeah. it's just. I think it's kind of funny. Like it's it is kind of funny though because um kind of now being in Nashville more right and so and there's a lot of people who you know, didn't grow up in the country or didn't grow up country, but they do, they are fans and connoisseurs of country music. Yeah. And so like, there's a lot of writers who want to write about it. And so there's like, it's kind of interesting to like, hear them kind of want to like, or conjure up what they think, con like what, like what, what, like if they were, if they grew up in the country, what that would feel like, what it would sound like. And so like, sometimes that's just different to hear. And we're like, what? Like, like, so you lived it. Right. 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 So, meet people and I'm like, dang, y'all are really country. <laughs> <laughs> people, I feel like people are often like, wow, hillbillies do still exist. This is them. <laughs> but it's crazy over here in England. I mean, country music in England has always been here, but it's it's been like under the counter for many years, you know, until C2C happened about 10 years ago. And then there was like mm -hmm. 20, 30,000 in, in a room. And we only had the likes of... Uh, the Mavericks coming over once or twice a year. We used to have Garth Brooks and a couple of, but now everybody comes over and yeah. it's even grown even more. But it, I mean, I'm, I've been an artist for like 20 years as well. And it's strange I, that you just said, we're trying to think of if we was a hillbilly, what would we do? Uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You know, I'm thinking, okay, I've got a tailgate. I've got, I've got beer. Uh, that'll go. Yes. We'll go with that. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like... We're going to have to take you mud riding one of these days. Yes. yes. We're going to bring mud right into London. Oh, yeah. Mud. Hey, there's, there's quite a few bits of mud here. I'm telling you. I've washed my car many a time. Yeah. And then we're already set up. We've got to be there. If there know? is mud, we will find it. Do you hear me? That as well. So what's on the horizon then for you girls? I mean, have you got uh, gigs planned, tours planned? Are you coming to the UK? 
Oh. Well, well, if the good folks over at the BCMAs would just like to have three lovely guests come over your way, you know, <laughs> we would definitely like to have passports. Just saying. There you go. <laughs> our passports are like just sitting on our dresser waiting. But um, <laughs> I'll, I'll <laughs> keep I'm with her. always ready. Always ready. Well, they'll be listening to this and be watching this video. So there you go. There's your, there's your plea. You know, you can get up off your knees now. You're okay. Come on. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just say it. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you ever want to come over, like you say, you, if you've got, you know, gigs or a run over here, you know, we've got links into a lot of festivals over here as well. We would love to have three great girls, you know, say, singing and making sass. You know the norm. Yeah. <laughs> I said to what I said to one one um, one lady who had a similar kind of vibe, and I said, "You've got sass in buckets." Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I like it. stealing it. Gone. Yeah, yeah. And I'm looking at the backdrop, and I had silly me just before recording said, "Where are you today?" And it's like about six pictures, <laughs> seven pictures saying Nashville on it. Books. Yeah, I mean, the great pictures then, but you're in a hotel at the moment, aren't you? You're not in some kind of yeah, club or anything. Right. Yeah, yeah. But what's what? Sorry, go on. Sorry. I was going to say, because we're on the road so much, we spend most of our time either in a van or in a hotel. But before we make it to the UK, we have shows coming up in Texas, Mississippi, Florida, South Carolina, kind of all over everywhere. But if you'd like to, you know, slot London in there, you know. Yeah, so definitely. London, London, okay. <laughs> I mean, they sound so near, they sound next to each other, but, you know, if you look at a map, but they're like thousands of miles in between, aren't they? <laughs> we could just slide on over. It makes, it, it makes my little tour sound uh, pale in comparison. I'm thinking on Friday, I'm in the south of England for a one-off wow. gig, and then 400 miles or whatever it is late on the next afternoon, I'm in the north of England. And I live in the north. I live right near Liverpool, you know, the home of the Beatles and things. And uh -huh. um, and I'm thinking to myself, why did I agree to this? But like, it's like that compared to what you're you're going to be doing. Oh my <laughs> gosh, we have become road bandits. Do you hear me? We have. We could probably tell you how many lines are on the road from one place to another. So. Uh, and you still. And you're still together. You've not killed each other. Well, the other two you killed, <laughs> but I mean, you've not killed the other two. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I keep saying to myself, I need one of them big posh vans that you see the stars. Have you got one of those? Have you got, a, you know, the, the van with the beds in and everything? No, we don't have a, not yet. Not yet, but we do have a, we do have a high top van. We're all about, we're all at least like five, ten or better. So we're, so we're some tall yeah, women. Tall Everybody, and when they tall. see us, they're like, wait, y'all are a lot taller than I expected. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we only have, we've only ever been to one place where we were about average height or everyone else was taller. And that was the NBA. Yeah. And oh, like, well. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Eight yeah. foot, eight foot guys. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm six. I'm six, two. I'm oh, six, two. Wrong. Our fellow taller. Yeah. That's person. my nickname is tall. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Well, oh, actually, it, it, yeah, it's actually tallish. Tallish. And the reason for that is I'm tall, but when I was at school, I was the tallest. But they said, but you're not that tall. So they said, we'll call you tallish. I like it, tallish. Tallish. So they pretty much had to, yeah. had to so, keep, your, keep your confidence at bay. I see what they did there. Yeah, I wasn't too <laughs> big. I played basketball. I did play basketball for my team. Oh, yeah. And do you like basketball? Oh, yeah. I'll tell they you, this is a true, true story. I had the ball underneath our net ready to throw out, but I threw it overarm and it went into the net on the opposite side into their net. Boom. Never repeated it. Could never repeat oh, you, it. You could have retired after that shot. Just I, I think I pretty much did, ball. really. <laughs> <laughs> I did two about 20 laps of the you know, going, yeah, thank you. There's about three people at the side going, all right, get on with the game. Um right. but because I was a soccer goalkeeper and I used to throw out a lot. That, I think that's what it was. Oh, uh, yeah. wow. Now okay. I'm too old, I'm too old to do anything now. Now I just do country music and drive. <laughs> no, that's good. There <laughs> well, congratulations on the nominations, girls. And Thank like I said, fingers crossed much. you get the award. And good luck on the road. And like I said, hopefully we get you to the UK and then we can compare height. As long as you don't wear those high heels. 
If you wear those high heels, I think we're going to be on oh, a level yeah, playing I field, do. aren't we? Yeah, yeah. You're, if we put on the high heels, you're out of there. Yeah, especially with the cowgirl yeah. hat on as well. But, right. <laughs> I won't want to be messing with you. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, but no, congratulations. Like I said, um, we'll be playing the songs and like I said, we'll be looking out for you and hopefully you get the award and we'll be able to chat and go, congrats. You know, <laughs> enjoy the rest of your day. And as I say, good, good luck with everything in the future for you three. And thank you so much for joining us here at the BCMA. We love you guys. Thank you. Adios.